Hi there, folks. This is the Algebra 1 Midterm Review, and as always, I am the amazing Mr. Jansen. So, away we go. Uh, if we take a look at this first one, uh, it just asks us to write an algebraic expression for the quotient of j and 8. And so, again, an algebraic expression, not an equation, so no equal sign, uh, but it gives us this uh, whole thing about quotient. Remember, quotient is division. And then we just have to take these in the right order. Notice that it lists the j and then the 8. So the quotient of j and 8 would be j divided by 8. And I'm just going to write it like this as a fraction, and that's it. Uh, if I look at the next couple, we're really just using order of operations here. So in this one, uh, order of operations, remember irmdas. It's inclusion symbols, then exponents and roots, then multiplication and division, then addition and subtraction. So I'm going to start with the inclusion symbols. So inside the inclusion symbols, uh, this first set, I have some addition to do. That's a 32. Uh, the second set, I have to do the uh, inclusion symbols once again. I subtract that, and it gives me a 1. And now I do the multiplication, followed by the division, only because they're written that way from left to right. Uh, so here, when I do this multiplication, that's 128, and then divided by 1. Uh, that gives me 128. That's all there is to it. Okay. Uh, the next one, again, I start inside the uh, parentheses here. So inside the parentheses, and really brackets are also inclusion symbols, so I'll go inside of those as well. But I'll start at the innermost parentheses. I do the exponents that are in here. That's a 25 and a 16. And I'm just slowly working my way out of those parentheses. I'm still inside that set of parentheses. I do the subtraction. That gives me a 9. And now I'm done with that innermost set of parentheses, so now I go inside the other inclusion symbols, which are the brackets, those uh, square-looking parentheses. Inside there, I'm going to do that uh, exponent first. That's a 36. Next, I'm going to go ahead and do the division, uh, because I have to do that before addition, so that gives me a 4. And now from here, I got 13 uh, times 13. And now 13 times 13 is 169. That's it. Okay, so just following those order of operations, start inside the parentheses, and then uh, working my way out to the exponents, and then multiplication, division, addition, and subtraction. All right? Uh, this one, same kind of thing, except we have to plug some values in first. Uh, so here I had u, which is 20, over z, which is 10, plus x, which is 4, uh, times y, which is 7, raised to the second power. And again, I use parentheses typically when I plug things in. Uh, but now I start with the exponent here. It's going to give me a 49. Uh, and then from here, really, uh, I can do the division and the uh, multiplication at the same time because they're kind of separated by uh, that addition symbol. So that's okay to go ahead and do. Uh, so that's going to give me, let's see, a 2. Uh, plus this guy is going to be a 196, and now I add them together, it looks like a 198. Okay, so again, just following those order of operations. Uh, if we look at the next one, it says name the number sets to which uh, 22 belongs. Uh, 22 is one of my, my natural numbers, it's those counting numbers, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, uh, like that. So it's a natural uh, number. Uh, because it's a natural number, that automatically makes it a whole number, because remember the whole numbers include all the natural numbers. Uh, because it's a whole number, it's automatically an integer, because remember the uh, uh, integers are the whole numbers and their opposites. And then because it's an integer, it's also a rational number. So we just kind of work our way out from the smallest to the, to the biggest. Uh, so the smallest set is the natural numbers. And of course, it's a real number, but we only deal with real numbers, so we don't need to list that right now. Okay. Uh, next one, same kind of thing. When you look at this, uh, because it's a square root, anytime you have a square root where you can't take it, uh, take that square root nicely, uh, it means you're going to get a never-ending, never-repeating decimal, which means this one is going to be an irrational number. Uh, for the next one, again, when you're dealing with things uh, going from least to greatest here, you want to put all of these in the same format. Uh, so we're just going to use our calculator to help us out a little bit. I'm going to take the square root of 5 and write this as a, uh, a 2.23 and then a negative 0 0.1. Uh, so just rewriting each of these, the, uh, the 5 over 3, that's going to be a negative 1.67. But again, just putting each of these in the same format, uh, the square root of 2, that's a 1.41. 1. 
And now that they're all in the same format, it should be really easy to determine which one is which in terms of the size. And so if I want to go least to greatest, it looks like the smallest value I have here uh, is the negative uh, 1.67. And uh, again, when I write it, I'm going to actually write it as the negative 5 thirds first. I'm going to convert it back to the original format. Uh, the next number is the negative uh, 0 0.1. Uh, the one that follows that guy, it looks like the, uh, the 0 0.7. After that, it looks like the 1.41, which is actually the square root of 2. And then the largest one looks like the 2.23, which is actually the square root of 5. Okay? So it's important to convert them all to the same kind of unit. So I converted all of them to decimals so I can compare them. But then when I actually write these, I want to put them back in the, that original format. Okay? Uh, the next one, it says at a video store, not that uh, uh, you guys would know what those are anymore. Uh, you buy two CDs uh, for $8.90 uh, each and uh, a DVD for $20.50 uh, each. And we want to use mental math to come up with the, the total cost of this thing. Uh, so again, we could kind of just look at this thing and say, all right, let's add them all up like this um, and just kind of line them up. And remember, when you're adding things, you just want to align those uh, decimal places. Uh, you add that first column, it's a zero. Uh, the second column, when you add it up, um, the 9 plus the 9 is an 18, and then uh, that gives, plus the 5 is a 23. When you write this, you put the, the 3 down here, and you kind of carry the 2 up. So then 2 plus 8 is a 10, plus 8 is an 18. And you carry the 1, and then it looks like a 5. So it looks like $58.30. And again, the, you line up the decimal place, and it just drops down into your answer. So it looks like you spent $58.30 on all those things. Okay. Uh, the next one, same kind of thing. We're using that mental math. It says at the grocery store, uh, you buy, whoops, sorry about that. At the grocery store, you buy a carton of milk for $3.90 and a loaf of bread for $1.95 and a bag of cookies for $3.05. Um, this one's a little bit easier to do in terms of the mental math. Uh, if you just kind of look at these values, uh, first by combining the, the $3.05 and the uh, the 195 and we choose those first because we can see that if I carry that five cents over to the 195 that's two dollars plus the three dollars is five dollars so it gives me an even five and then let's add that three dollars and ninety cents well that's going to be eight dollars and ninety cents okay and so instead of just taking that more literal approach this one's really easy to do uh, by kind of rearranging things in order at, uh, adding them in a certain order okay Scroll down here, if I can make it. Uh, the next one, it says simplifying each using uh, mental math. Really just testing our skills in terms of addition here. Negative uh, 7 plus 5 is going to be a negative 2. Again, they're different signs, so you subtract and keep the sign of the larger number. Here, negative 6 plus a negative 3, since they're both negative, we just add them together and keep it negative. That's a negative 9. Uh, here, when we add these guys together, again, uh, when you think about this, um, you can either kind of stack these and do the subtraction, um, or you can just kind of think of it, uh, you know, if you think about like the, the 1.7 is taking it down 2, that brings us to a negative uh, 4.1, but I went down a little bit too far. It's actually a negative 4.4 uh, uh, when you subtract that. Uh, this one, whenever we have fractions being multiplied, you can always cross-reduce, so I can reduce the 10s to a 1 and a 1. Uh, just like with the same way we reduce fractions. And now I multiply straight across. 5 times 1 is a 5. 1 times 3 is a 3. So it looks like a 5 thirds. Uh, this one, when you look at something like this guy, we almost want to kind of think of this uh, just like we would as if we were doing negative 12 in parentheses squared. And negative 12 in parentheses squared would actually equal, sorry, I didn't make my thought bubble big enough. I, I've got big thoughts here. Uh, that's a 144. Well, this is going to be the same thing, except instead of the 144, because we did a, a 1.2 times a 1.2, I actually have to move that decimal over two places, so I put it here and do a 1.44, uh, if that makes sense. But again, when you're multiplying, uh, you just kind of keep the same number of decimal places when you do that. Uh, so because I had one decimal place from the one 1 1.2 and another from the other 1.2, I move it two decimal places. Okay, uh, This one, the plus or minus, we just kind of stick out front. It just tags along for the ride. Now I just take the square root of each of these. The square root of 100 is 10. The square root of 49 is a 7. And that's it. 
Uh, this one we're going to do our distributive property and it's okay to go ahead and distribute backwards with that negative 1. So I distribute that negative 1 that gives me a negative 4 plus a C and that's it. That's all it asks me to do. Uh, this one we're simply combining like terms here and so when we look at this the, the M uh, squareds are like terms so I'm going to add those together um, and then the uh, N's are like terms so I'm going to add those together. Uh, there's actually a third one in here. And so again, I'm just combining these like terms. The 1.7 and the 2.5 uh, gives me, uh, let's see, a 4.2. So it's just 4.2. The variable parts is the same, so 4.2m squared. Uh, the n's, when I add these together, the first two added together, the 6.5 and the, the negative 4, that gives me a 2.5. And then the minus 1 gives me a 1.5. And again, it just stays as an n. Okay, so just combining those like terms. Uh, this one, the directions are a little bit strange on this one. It says to write it, oh my goodness, sorry, my uh, scrolling technique is not going well. Uh, but it says to write it as a sum or difference here. Um, really, it's asking me to do my distributive property with division. And so I just divide each of these. I do the 3x divided by 9, and then I do the 2 divided by 9. And so here I just reduce. This is actually a 1 third x minus 2 ninths. Okay? But it's just our distributive property with division. Here again, when you see a negative out front, that's basically like a negative 1 that's hanging out there. So I'm going to distribute that negative 1 to each of these. Uh, that gives me a 10p and then minus 4r. So it's really just changing the sign of everything that's in there. Okay. Uh, the next couple just asked me to solve each equation. So if I look at this first one, uh, I've, the first thing I have to do is get the variables on the same side. So I'm going to subtract, and I always move the, the smaller of the two variables. So I'm going to subtract the 2x from each side. Uh, that gives me a 1 equals 2x minus 5. Now I'm going to get the variable by itself, so now I'm going to add the 5 to each side. And now divide by the 2. And when I do that, I find out that x equals a 3. Uh, the next one, the first thing I would probably do, or the first thing that most students would do, is distribute here. Um, there are other options, but that's going to be the typical way that most students approach it. So I'm going to distribute that too. Uh, that gives me a 6h minus 8 uh, equals 4. And I'm going to add the 8 to each side. That gives me the 6h equals a 12. And now I divide by the 6. So again, I simplify and then solve. I simplify by distributing and combine like terms by getting um, variables all on the same side. And then I solve by undoing order of operations. Okay. Uh, the next one, we have something like this guy. You can undo that division. Uh, right now you're dividing by 3. Uh, so you can multiply each side by 3. Or we can look at this as a 4 over 1. Now this is a proportion which means I just cross multiply. I do 4 times 3 is a 12, and then g minus 2 times 1 is a g minus 2. Okay, And now from here to solve this thing, I just add the 2 to each side. So I end up with g equals a 14. Uh, the next one, uh, the second I see a fraction inside of an equation, uh, we can always eliminate fractions by multiplying through by the common denominator. So in this one, the common denominator, the only denominator I see is a 7. So I'm basically just going to multiply everything by 7. Let me re rewrite this so I have a little bit of room, uh, a little bit of room to work. But I'm just going to multiply each side by the common denominator, which is a 7. So over here, I have to use my distributive property. Uh, so on this first side, I get a 49. Over here, when I distribute, 7 times 6 sevenths is a 6, so I get a 6x, minus uh, 8 times 7 is the 56. And now from here, I can start solving this thing pretty easily. I add the 56 to each side. That gives me what looks like a, a 105. And now I divide each side by the 6. Uh, so I find out, let's see, that equals, uh, looks like 17 and a half. Uh, and you can write your answer as a decimal or a fraction here. I'll write it as a, just a decimal just so we can be a little bit quick about this. Okay. Uh, the next one, same kind of thing. If I rewrite this to give myself just a little bit of space here, 
the common denominator between the 6, the 3, and the 18 is an 18. So I'm going to multiply everything by an 18. I multiply this side by 18. I multiply this side by 18. And now it's just my distributive property. So here I distribute. Uh, that gives me a 3f. Uh, here, when I multiply 18 times the 2 thirds, that gives me a 12. And here, when I multiply, I get a 7. And now from here, I just finish solving this thing. So I subtract the 12 from each side. So that gives me a 3f equals a negative 5. I divide each side by the 3. So I find out that f equals, and I'm just going to leave it right like a, this fraction, negative 5 over 3. Okay. 